Adrian. Thank you. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, nice to see all of you joining in for the webinar. Um, I am the course director for finance and management and investment management program. Uh, and this will be a catch up session with you about uh, basically our programs, finance programs. Uh, and any questions that you have, we will also try to answer them in due time. Just one advanced warning, we will record this session. I think it will be available later if you want to watch it um, as well as recording, you're able to do so as well. So welcome one more time on behalf of the program uh, and me as a course director. So I'll start with uh, interesting points. So I think a few things about Cranfield first and foremost. Um, in general, we are uh, mainly for those of you who are not aware potentially, a postgraduate uh, university focusing on science and technology uh, and engineering as, a, as, as something that we have started early in, in, in the history of this university and also, of course, management school where you have applied. We have over 50 years of experience of working with and advising leading companies across the globe and also being involved into not just uh, postgraduate education in context of uh, MSc programs, but also in context of executive and MBA education as well. Uh, and I think one of the key features of Cranfield is our focus on personal development, even in, uh, in the context of postgraduate education. Uh, and I'll come to that a little bit later on when I present some specific features of the course. I think one of other advantages is that the school is very well linked with industry and there is always a world uh, focus or if you like examples, how all of these theoretical things can be applied in practice. Um, just before I start with the rankings, uh, just to say one thing, if there are any questions, if, if you feel you want to know something and you don't want to wait at the end of the session, that is perfectly fine. Just drop us a, a question in the chat uh, and then I will try to answer it uh, right away. Okay, in terms of the rankings, we are accredited uh, school. So we have triple accreditation basically on the school level, which is Association of the Advanced Collegiate Schools of Business or, or Association of MBAs or European Quality Improvement System. So that means that if in other language, we are accredited also in the UK, in Europe and the US, if you, if you think in, in context of accreditation. Uh, that is on the school level, uh, School of Management. On the program level, we are also regularly participating in rankings uh, where we are consistently ranked, uh, depending on the ranking top 40, top 50, um, uh, or higher depending on which year you look at. Uh, that includes Financial Times, uh, where we have been ranked 12th in the UK in the last ranking uh, year and 50th in the world, and also in Wall Street Journal, uh, where we are uh, top 10 in the world. One other potential ranking that you might see also is the QS ranking, where we are top 10 in the UK and top 40 in the world as well, which is some kind of overview of the course from the, let's say, uh, external stakeholders, if you like. Um, in terms of the who does School of Management work, these are just some companies. Uh, we also have dedicated career service for our students, which provides some career training and exposure to, um, uh, let's say, sessions for uh, interviews, for internships, and other things that we do throughout the year as well, which also reflects on our program. Um, now, specifically to the program, which I think most of you are here for, a uh, few things about specific features of each program. So we have basically two programs in finance. One is finance and management, and the other one is investment management uh, program. So let's say if you are focusing, if you have applied for finance and management, then you are looking to have both tools and techniques, not just for the finance, but also for the management. So you want to have some soft skills embedded within your um, overall finance knowledge. And this will, of course, be applied in real work situations. So this will be blended uh, in some kind of financial management context, if you like. Uh, if you applied for investment management, you want to focus more on investment side of the things. Uh, and in this case, you are focusing on, let's say, derivatives, uh, risk management, hedging, uh, trading, uh, and portfolio management co in context, so more applied finance from investment side of the things. Um, in terms of what is special about our finance courses, so uh, apart from that you will have your uh, uh, recognized uh, professors in, in the area who published in the area who are well recognized, you also, we also have linked with industry where we have uh, uh, CEOs of different companies um, also teaching on our course throughout some models for sure related to, for example, ESG uh, or related to a financial markets model. 
And then we also run certain uh, advanced courses or business simulations and so on, which are also linked to this business expertise of our external, uh, external, external partners. Um, of course, uh, I would say that there is also a nice combination in the program between how we teach in the program. So it is not just formal teaching in context, you go into the lecture room and you have your, uh, your classes, which is traditional way of delivering, but we also have a large case studies portfolio. We have different exercises, interactive lectures, and we also do a lot of uh, uh, group project base, especially in, in context of the electives, where you can pra practice these real case studies, for example, uh, uh, in ESG context or in M&A context, if you like. We have regular seminars and speeches from uh, recognized academics, but also more importantly, from the industry and also which our students really like from our formal alumni, um, uh, which, which, in which they talk about their career and, and basically how it went uh, for them after graduating and so on. Um, and I think one other thing that is also uh, characteristic of this, of the finance programs, is that we have a large blend of all kinds of different cultures and geographical areas. And also I would say one specifically unique feature is that we have very small uh, lecture rooms. So in the, in the context, if you just compare us to some traditional universities, they would have more than hundred students in the classroom uh, for this kind of uh, master program. We always tend to not have more than 50 and usually our, our classes are between 30 to 50 size. Um, depending on the year and so on. So you have some kind of re real feel for uh, tutorial feel of, of the lectures. Uh, Dominic, any questions for me here? No, um, any questions for me? Maybe from the candidates, if you want to ask something up, up to now, I'm happy to answer it. Okay, something about our faculty. There is one question, right? Yes, go ahead, Varad. Yes, go ahead if you like, yes. Yeah, hi, Neymanja. Mm -hmm. Hi. So, uh, I have already applied to the course, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to ask some questions uh, uh, regarding the careers after uh, the course. Mm -hmm. So currently I am pursuing the final level of chartered accountancy here and I've worked for three years mm -hmm. in audits and taxation. Okay. And I've also completed my master's in commerce here. Okay. So after doing this course, uh, would I, uh, is this course the right course to get into m and uh, section of the investment banks in London? Okay. Okay, okay. Will okay. this help me? Okay, fine, fine. Um, shall I, uh, do you want me to answer that maybe a little bit later when I do careers, uh, just not to skip a few parts that, that come before? Yeah, that. yeah, sure, sure. Maybe, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. okay. Sure, yeah, thank you. Yes, I'll, I'll come to, I'll come, one it also to this one. I'm just coming to the difference. And so I'll, I'll just uh, show you now example and so on. So just a few things, but I'll keep it in mind. Yeah, for sure, I'll answer it. So just in terms of uh, our faculty, so this is who we are in terms of the uh, fixed members of staff. Uh, as you can see on our web profile, teaching different subjects, like for example, you can see me there, I'll be teaching you, for example, statistical analysis in finance, or you'll have Yasin who'll be teaching you uh, corporate finance, for example, and so on. And then on the other, on the other hand, you also have industry uh, recognized speakers, uh, which, which are uh, experts in the area. So for example, Walter, who is the uh, basically uh, chief uh, financial officer, or if you like CEO of um, uh, different multinational companies, you have Peter Yalop, who has more than 25 or 30 years of experience in trading. Uh, Alexander Shavarot, who is an expert in ESG, who has advised, for example, um, uh, a Democratic uh, Party or Bill Clinton at the time on the on ESG matters. And Jane Vesey, who is an expert on fund management strategies and who has uh, she has been writing actually in one moment in time uh, CFA exams before the new restructuring of the of the exam. Basically. And so this is just something of the overview of the faculty. So you'll have a nice blend of different expertise on the program from macroeconomic with Costas to maybe private equity with Wasim. Uh, okay, so for the question related to the structure of the course. So basically uh, you have the course is structured in, the, in two terms and the third term or ter term three and four, if you like, is the thesis part. 
So in the, in the term one, you have your core models and then you have electives. And then the same is in the term two, but I'll just now refer to the term one option. So in term one, uh, all the students, so both programs, finance and management, investment management, follow the core models in term one. And then uh, any student can choose any of the one, two electives, which is either organizational management or ESG or investing in for environmental and social impact. And that is the, the term one. So you have a choice of elective in term one, which you elect early when you start term one, but the core part is fixed, yeah. And so um, in term two, I think just to emphasize, this is where this difference that uh, Andrit, you asked me, so I think just to clarify, uh, starts to be more uh, prominent. So for example, if you look, you have core models uh, option one, uh, the, the one, um, so I think I just need to get rid of this. So you have your core models. So you have your applied research methods and evaluation, which is the same for both programs. And then this is where separation happens. So investment management goes into the two options down below, which is derivatives and financial risk management and investment and portfolio management. And finance and management program has two other core models, which are international corporate finance and strategic management. And then each student, irrespective of the course, can still select two electives out of five where, where you choose either private equity, for example, or uh, fintech model and so on. Does this answer your question? Yes, it does. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ed. Okay. Uh, so, just to follow yeah. up, I just wanted to ask about the electives. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, in the first term, do we only get to select one? Uh, also for the second term as well, do we only get to select two or we can we choose more as well? No, you get to select, you have to select only as required. And so, for example, you have to meet certain credit criteria for a program. So you can choose one of the two in elective, electives in term one and two out of five in term two. And, and, right. and, and, tr and trust me, this is more than enough. It, it is very okay. uh, comp compact schedule. So, uh, you know, asking more would be too much of an ask in the given structure. Sure, thank you. Okay, any other questions with the course content, uh, differences between the programs and so on? No, okay, I'll move on then from this. So uh, another thing that I think I wanted to emphasize, so uh, we blend our traditional lectures with seminars, with case studies, with a panel of business leaders, which we have in a year. Uh, we have faculty with industry backgrounds, whether they have worked or they are advising for certain companies and so on. We also host uh, industry events. So for example, uh, we have hosted a, a number of these events where we bring our former alumni or, or, or uh, uh, executives from other companies and we have like a panel and discussion and then our students can, can, can network and merge and so on uh, uh, with, 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 with these in particular individuals. I think one that has been very successful is the, the latest one where we had a lot of our alumni who have provided all kinds of different experience, not just from their experience with us in Cranfield, but also of acquiring a job, maintaining a job, and then changing uh, basically uh, the, the job itself and changing industries also in a way, et cetera. And they have been from varying different industries and countries, which has been proven to be very interesting for our students. A few other things that we do as well throughout the program, we run different simulations. So when I say simulation, so for example, in the term one, you would have financial modeling simulation uh, with me, which is more about how you model certain uh, conditions in financial markets in financial context, uh, in the context of statistics, econometrics, and, and financial modeling analysis. And then you have your business simulation in term two, which is uh, part of one of the core models, in which case you have business case study, uh, which you analyze with, uh, with experts as well, with uh, visiting experts. Uh, and then you, we also provide, in addition to that, we also provide uh, uh, advanced financial modeling uh, course, usually in, in term three for our students, that links to the things that we have necessarily not covered in the course, but we think might be useful uh, for our students. So in the past year, this was, for example, machine learning and artificial intelligence. And this year, we'll, we'll see what, what we organize for our students, depending on their preference as well. And this is something that is blended uh, as well uh, with, within the program very well. Now. Is that a question for me? Okay. No. 
in terms of our learning facilities, I think they contribute to the idea that I told you about having small uh, lecture, uh, lecture rooms, uh, le le lecture size rooms for our students, which I think were very beneficial. And it's one of the feedbacks that we always receive as, as one of the distinct feature of Cranfield is that uh, we have this field to field experience with, with your tutors and lecturers and so on, uh, and all of these external speakers because of the smaller groups and so on. So, uh, and they are designed in a way that they, they encourage discussion and debate, which is something that's common across our teaching and across our model. So we expect students you know, to read, to prepare, and then to discuss with us e even in the class when we are teaching these uh, somewhat compl complicated cases or subjects. We have meeting rooms which are designed for uh, learning learning teams, and which basically what we do in the in the program, we also try to mix students uh, in into not just in smaller groups in streams, but also in learning teams where we try to blend different cultures, uh, you know, differences of the of the characteristics of the students, so they can learn from each other and they can learn how to work with each other, basically, and so on. And then some of the assessments are geared towards this way as well, working in a group or a part of a larger group or a part of a, a, of a team. And these private study areas are actually very, very well tailored to facilitate this. Of course, we have our television and computer studio, which you might see uh, if we organize uh, another webinar live, so you can join us there as well. A um, specific feature of the School of Management is also our Management Information and Resource Center library, which is, um, it's not the main library, but it's the library for uh, usually for business, uh, for management students, which they like to use more often than not. And especially I would say finance students, because um, you would be linked to databases like Bloomberg Terminal or, or, or ICON or other facilities that would be specifically in this, in this area or, or the Miracle Library, as we like to call it. Okay, so um, another thing that might be interesting for the students is that we are accredited course for CFA, and that means that we cover more than 70% of the accreditation uh, syllabus as well. Uh, we are not preparation for the CFA, but we do cover it. So I would say on average around 30% of our cohort, I would say each year, if not more, um, goes always to, to pass CFA level one. And then we have always uh, over the years, couple of students who do CFA level two or CFA level three, not during the course, but shortly after, especially with the later uh, 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 higher level of CFA accreditation. Uh, in addition to this, we also have scholarships from CFA. So we give certain number of scholarships uh, for, the, for the CFA uh, to our students, which we communicate early in, in, in term two to those who have performed the best in the first part of the program and who have applied for this particular route. Also, in addition to this, uh, we organize workshops for this, where we provide material and training for students who want to go, for example, for CFA accreditation. And we also uh, uh, have, we also cover parts of the, of the CFA accreditation that is not covered in the course there. Um, and then students can exercise uh, past exam papers and so on, or they have some quizzes that mimic the CFA level exams, basically. This is usually done in the term three, sometime in the in thesis period, uh, to be very specific. Okay, any questions here for me? Yes, Huawei, go ahead, you can ask me. Hello, are you getting me please? Yes, go ahead, I can hear you well. Yes, my name is Sorel. Um, I'm in Cameroon, so I intend, I want to enhance my professional career next year in UK. That's why I decided to <coughs> to hear more from you during this webinar. Okay, fine. Yes, I want to know, uh, since I have seen that uh, you also have private equity as the, uh, what I can say, like, <coughs> is it possible after the course to just get direct in private equity? Are you also preparing for a London summer internship? Yes, yes, okay, okay. That's the similar question to the to the career. So I'll, I'll come there a little bit shortly when I'm on careers, okay? So just bear with me a little bit longer, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, any other questions with this uh, part so far, at least? And then I'll come to careers a little bit later on. I'm sure you have questions there. Oh, I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. So, how does you you mentioned the CFA scholarship? So, uh, what are the criteria for that? How does that work? 
uh, just to make it very simple. So basically you, you express your interest for this one to our SAS lead. And then uh, once you finish the term one, we would just check the performance of the students. So those who are at the top would be qualified for, the, for this uh, scholarship. And the scholarship will be allocated by the CFA directly. So each year they communicate to us the number of scholarships. So it's usually between five and 10 scholarships each year. And so, so if you're, uh -huh. Yeah, is this only for the level one or level two or three also? Uh, well, it depends. Usually that applies for level one, but this is something we can also check year on year with the CFA as well. Okay. Depending on depending on circumstance, because things might change. But over the years, uh, just trying to think, I don't remember that anybody of level two or level three has asked for it. But okay, everything's possible. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and specifically, I would say if you are in that band, so you're applying for level two and three, uh, then we have to me and you have a chat and approach it a little bit differently because this exam is a little bit more advanced, especially level three. And so you have said you have to you have to make sure that you have time to prepare for it, and and so you're not affected in the course. You see what I mean? So while maybe you know level ones can do their exam uh, without big problems, uh, you know in the third uh, uh, run of the exam, maybe in September October, that might might not be the case for the level three because you have to be preparing for longer time. So this is something that informally we'd have to have a chat and plan for for these things throughout the program, for example. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, any other question about this? Hi. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to ask regarding the dissertation. Uh, mm -hmm. How would the dissertation be? Means, uh, do we have to take part with the, you know, some companies and do some kind of internship and then provide thesis or what would it be you know, actually the dissertation part? Well, dissertation, just to be very clear, in finance is purely quantitative. Uh, so in the sense you, you, you are given early in term two a list of topics uh, from the members of, of staff and uh, external partners that you can work on. And so you can choose any particular relevant field from the list of the topics. And then you'll be choosing your topic and be allocated supervisor. You'll be working on that as a research project. This will be something that would culminate with everything you've done in the course. So basically you have to you know, analyze a systematically a literature um, then you would have to uh, uh, download the sample, uh, process it, analyze it, discuss the results, and so on. In some in some cases, sometimes we do have some students who who go on internships, but uh, we specifically with uh, let's say we have experience with internships and theses, and we try to avoid this mi mixing these two together. Okay, so if you're saying whether students can do internship and thesis in the same time, it's possible, but it's something that you normally discuss with me and organize your work around this particular problem. But this is not something that we blend together unless we are specifically able to, you know, uh, control the employer, which is very difficult because you have to provide certain level of standard for MSc dissertation. Okay, uh, thank you. So in, in some areas, it's easier, like, for example, in logistics, it might be easier to do this, but not for finance, specifically because this is a large chunk of your MSc program. So we want to make sure that you do well there rather than to struggle and fail because of the internship that is not good enough for this level of work. Hello, sir. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, yes. Yes, so, sir, as you are just coming to reply, that it means that it's not possible for me, if ever I get into the program, to do a London summer ship while doing dissertation. Can you type it for me? Because I was not sure I was able to understand the question. Uh... No, I just came back uh, for the question that you was uh, replying. Uh -huh. <clears throat> yes, I want to know that. So it is not possible for it for a student to be involved in, in a London summer internship and also doing dissertation. It's not possible to do it to do both at the same time. Uh, no, no, I didn't. I didn't say that. So it, it, the question was, do you do inter? Is internship your dissertation? No, because that, that's impossible to 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 control. And the companies have their own rules, and the universities have their own rules. So this is by default. What I said usually, we have students who do internship. This is how the UK is organized. So internships are usually done in the summer. So you can do your internship. We just try to organize your studies in a way that your internship doesn't collide with your uh, your, your thesis. So you are able to perform well in internship, but also in your program. So that's what I said um, uh, for that example. Does that make sense? Okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. And I would just say because you asked me about uh, internships, this is a to uh, complicated topic in the sense that, for example. Uh, for the student who asked me about private equity, 
So private equity is very specific area of business. One doesn't just decide to go into private equity. You have to do some kind of detour before you go there. So you have to have a certain level of exposure and experience before, before you go there. So having internships right away in private equity is very unlikely for all kinds of different reasons. And, and stepping into private equity directly out of university is very unlikely unless you go into specific routes uh, and so on. And I guess we'll have later on one of our students so who, who has been working and has been studying with us, who is looking to work something in this context so he can give you some kind of more, uh, more, more, more kind of analysis on this particular context as well. Okay. So it's, a it's, a, it's, it's a trajectory. I, you look at it as a trajectory, okay? So certain level of jobs, you have to do certain things before you jump into them, okay? And they don't recruit necessarily for them right away of certain, uh, let's say, uh, right, right off the university. Go, go ahead, tell me. Yes, I was asking that, so uh, it is very so it is very better to first start with investment bank if you want to learn in. Uh, well, yes, 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 yes. Usually, usually, like you go into some consultancy, whether it's investment bank or whether it's an advisory firm or something like that, boutique or something like that, or traditional bank. Uh, and so on, and then you, you can see how you work your way around this stuff. But but there is no one golden rule. I mean, there, there might be some people who find direct entry, but more often than not, you have to find some work around this as well. Okay. This, uh, is it possible to get into JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs after the program? I mean, I, I, I mean, how can I answer this? Everything is possible. So, um, uh, but uh, in the context of of, of our students. They are everywhere. I mean, I, I mean, uh, one of the students that we had now in this term was from uh, Bank of America, basically. So another of our students who was our alumni visiting speaker is the chief financial officer of one of the biggest hedge funds uh, in the UK. So everything is possible, uh, but you you have to you have to find your way around around everything, basically. Yeah. Okay, Dominic is telling me questions at the end. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, no worries. Uh, or we just go as we go. Okay, so a few other things as well. Um, what happened there? Okay, sorry. So a uh, few other things to say because students always ask about this. Uh, just want to say a few things about um, uh, current academic year or our academic year and past experience and so on. And then I'll have a few things to say about careers as well. Um, so just Clearly, we are one of the very rare universities that does think face to face. So uh, I would say if you look anywhere else, I mean, nobody has been doing as much face to face as us. I'm, I'm pretty confident to say this. We have only been closed when we, we have been advised by the government to close down. Otherwise, we have been open for our students all the way through. That includes the term teaching, of course, you know, formal meetings in lectures and so on. And we are not doing anything online unless absolutely uh, uh, required and so on. And we want you, you all to experience face to face. Uh, interaction basically and so on. Uh, we have some good practices over the years as well, uh, especially last year, a couple of our students have submitted and published in top journals in, in the finance area as well. Um, uh, Chris is here with us this year, we are participating in different challenges. Over the years, we have participated in all of these challenges from uh, sustainable challenge of Morgan Stanley to European Finance Cup, to Bloomberg, to, to, to CFA a couple of years ago when it ran and so on. Um, and I guess I mentioned the two other things as well about CFA revision sessions and advanced financial modeling and machine learning as well uh, in the past years. Um, I think, uh, I think apart from a small mistake here, just in terms of the scholarships, I know students always ask about this. So they are scholarships that are related to the uh, overall, to any student that are open, et cetera. So you can look for these Cranfield postgraduate loan scheme if you need some help in that context. Or we also have some limited scholarships on the program level, which you can write to admissions and ask for the for the support if you need it. And in addition to that, which is also under my control, the Cranfield scholarship. And then also, in addition to that, I would also advise students have a look at this um, web page, which is funding MSc funding opportunities, which has a list of different uh, scholarships, right? That you can apply for different regions. So, for example, or let's say uh, demographics, and then you can apply for those scholarships uh, as well, uh, and so on. In addition to that, um, um, if you have any questions, you can always write to the admissions directly and, and ask for more clarification at, at, at that. One good web page is this for you, Cranfield AC UK, some funding, MSc funding opportunities. So, so you should be able quickly to find the list of these scholarships there. 
Okay, tell me, I'm listening. Why don't you write the question? Just write the question in the chat and then I can address it, yeah? Thanks. Just type it and then as I go through slides, I'll just stop in one moment and then I'll address each one of those, okay? And then if there is anything else, just ask me, okay? Um, CFA, I, as I said, we participate in different challenges. Unfortunately, CFA has not been running in the last two years in the UK only. Um, I'm not sure I know the reasons, but we try to organize certain things on our own as well. And I think some of you asked me, I think if I remember correctly in the chat, so how do we apply some of the knowledge uh, in the course? So this, one of the things that, and I, I guess our Chris student rep can, can address this, is that we also have Cranfield Finance Society, which is the society organized by our students that has all kinds of uh, nice opportunities for our students in terms of getting familiar, uh, familiar with the investment side of the things, trading in particular, managing portfolios and so on. So you can get some more exposure in day-to-day -day, uh, business throughout this uh, particular uh, finance society. And I think this year, um, with the society and with the, some of the other models in term two, we are going to organize basically a trading game that is going to last throughout a couple of uh, months uh, uh, as, as a good practical application of all of this as well, which is something that Bloomberg does as a trading challenge uh, uh, usually, which also can run uh, when you start with us next year as well, that you can participate in. A uh, few other things, I mean, we bring a, a variety of speakers and you said this, you asked me about how do you get into banks? How do you get into private equity? How do you get into certain companies? So we try to bring different speakers from different uh, companies that were either our students or somebody, somebody that we know and or who are executives in these companies for you to benefit from their talk, to see from their experience, how did they acquire a job? How did they progress in their career? How did they arrive at certain positions? What were the good practices that they employed? What were the not so good practices and so on? And I think our students enjoy this because they can learn from the experience. This is just some of the examples that we have had in the past year or so. Let me stop here, just take some of these questions. Okay. Um, well, it depends on the scholarship. So uh, that's why I suggested that you have a look at the, the scholarships before you, um, you ask this. So each scholarship would have different amount. So you could apply depending on different level of scholarships. Uh, sometimes they are given for a region, sometimes they are given for certain other characteristics. So have a look at the web page. It has a lot of information. Try to click on these links and then it will be clear from each of these how much it is. And if, if something is not clear, for example, let's say for Cranfield Scholarship, just write to admissions and they can reply to you directly, okay? To the maximum amount and, and, and so on, if that's what you're asking, okay? I think we are on track, Dominic, yeah? I'll just continue and then so on. Uh, first, of the, a few things I mentioned about the learning, uh, learning facilities. So I'm, I'm just going to skip this part because there is no need to repeat it. Uh, just focus on career development service. So some of you asked me about careers. Uh, there are two things to say about, about careers. So we, we, we want our students to be successful. And I think the school invests resources in this, in this, uh, in this context. So you have career development service, which is basically, uh, which is offered to you. Uh, not just when you are our student, but also when you complete uh, your, your studies. So, it, uh, so what do you get in these kind of sessions? You get your CV preparation, you get uh, uh, to get experience to access to the software that gives you relevant job postings as well. We organize different uh, career fairs that are either related in when you start the, uh, the, the course with us in autumn or later in the year uh, when there are some other opportunities and so on. And then we also bring our, our former alumni to talk about and for you potentially to network and maybe get internship offer throughout that. Uh, also on the program level, um, sometimes over the year, we have also invitations from our uh, uh, successful alumni in different world regions where they ask us, do we have uh, any students who are interested into this particular area, you know, doing this uh, investment portfolio analysis in, in, let's say in Asia, and then we, we forward this to our students so they can apply as well. One thing that is very specific to UK market, I have to, I have to say this, even though students are not really uh, uh, seeing it like this, is that uh, especially for the levels uh, or positions that you are wanting to apply, uh, the, usually the company is one that you are making an effort on your own. So in this culture is, is more perceived better if you chase the job yourself rather than if somebody 
pushes you there, unless they specifically ask, like I said, in the example of our formal alumni. Is that the question for me? Yes, for the CFA level exam one, uh, well, the scholarship is related to your cost of, 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 of going into the exam, I think. And uh, what you are asking me is related to the CFA workshop. So in the CFA workshop, you get your preparation material, mock tests, exam, past exams, and so on, these examples. So we do tend to provide this for students, yes, in short. Okay, what was the question uh, regarding the careers that I said I wanted to uh, answer to the student? Do you want to ask me now again, did I, did I miss it? Did I, did I not answer it or I did? One is that you? Did you ask me the question Hello? about careers? Yep, go ahead. Yeah, no. The... Uh -huh. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to ask regarding careers in m and uh -huh. So uh, m and requires a knowledge of both finance and some degree of accounting. So yes. is the, the accounting part covered in the course and do uh, students from uh, this course tend to go to M uh, investment banks for careers in m and Yes, thanks. Uh, good point. Uh, actually, it is. So we have accounting in term one. I don't know if you managed to see the, 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 the terms uh, the spreadsheet. So accounting is there. We cover much of the, of, if you like, accounts, financial accounts specifically for a purpose of specifically being able to analyze investment appraisals, all, all kinds of different things and so on. And in context of what you asked me, yes, I think if you look at our, I mean, it's, it's even hard for me to say what is traditional student. I say, let's say traditional student is somebody with the background in finance, but we have a lot of students who have maybe purely accounting background uh, or who have uh, let's say uh, management background or completely outside of the of, of this they are engineers or they are mathematicians or uh, they are in art so we have had students with all kinds of backgrounds and they have been able to move into let's say advisory roles this is what you are you are asking me basically so yes uh, of course it's, it's it's yeah this is the experience we have had yeah so it's fine i see no problems there that's why uh, if you are doing invest uh, finance and management program it gives you this good blend of all of this that we have suggested so if you are maybe moving more into finance, we have a good blend of both soft skills and maybe finance specific skills for these advisory positions. Yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, one more thing I wanted to ask. So regarding the CFA question that I put in the chat box. Mm -hmm. uh, so do the students get the learning material and mock test during the course that is the MSc course or yes. uh, do they get it after the MSc course and apply for the exam later on? Yes, we organize it at a certain point. And I said, in, 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 when you finish the taught part of the course, so sometimes when you start thesis part, okay, and then you go through this workshop and then the material is released to all, all of those who are doing the, the, the particular level of the CFA. And then you have, I don't know, depending on the level, three to six months to practice. And then depending when you book the exam, you can sit and hopefully pass as well. Yeah, so in short, yes. Sure. Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot, yeah. But just to add, we, we do not want to condone students doing the CFA during the taught part. That, that, that never ends up very well. So that's why if there is anything organized, we organize it later when it's a little bit quieter and then you can just focus better on, on different things, okay? So another point, I think just wanted to give you a short video of careers, uh, of careers team as well. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear this. Dominic, if there is any problem, just let me know, okay? I'll just play this short video for everybody. Thank you. Welcome to this presentation by myself, Alexis Drake, the Marketing Communications Manager for Cranfield University's Career Development Service. In this presentation, I'm going to be talking to you about various activities that the department holds to help support launch your postgraduate career. This is our wheel of activities that we use, so you can expect to take part and benefit from all of these things during your time at Cranfield. So let's dive into one-to-one -one coaching. This is personalized support from our team of career development coaches who are highly trained in the areas of business development, human resources, and training. You can have unlimited number of coaching appointments with these people 
and we have a range of flexible times to suit you so that you can fit it in in around your study commitments. We're delivering these face to face or virtual depending on what's going on in the world at the time and we can help you with everything from completing your application forms all the way through to negotiating job offers. So it really is an end to end support process. Our employer engagement team create connections with lots of different organisations, some of which are in the logos below. And this means that they bring a continuous stream of relevant opportunities to you that you can access through our CRM simplicity, which I'll talk to you about in a moment. The employer engagement team put on lots of events throughout the year, whether that's virtual or face to face, all in the name of linking you up with recruiters who are interested in Cranfield students. We have a special relationship with Student Park Student Circus who are a specialist agency that actually find employers who are willing to sponsor visas. Uh, so this is a strategic decision we've made to again bring our students the most amount of opportunities possible. We also have recently launched a career mentoring programme. So that's where you can come together with alumni from Cranfield and also other professionals in industry who can provide you with advice and guidance that will help set your career on the path. Now onto some of our resources. Simplicity is a really powerful CRM and it's your online career management portal. So here you can load up your Cranfield CVs, cover letters, you can set job alerts for industries that you're interested in, and you can also book into workshops, events, and book your coaching appointments as well. It's just the same for our recruiters, so they actually use Simplicity to load their job vacancies and to find suitable candidates for their roles. We also have an app for on-the-go connectivity, so it really is a very useful portal for you to use. We will be giving you workshops on how to use this as soon as you start Cranfield. VMOC is our 24-7 critiquing system. And in here, we have set Cranfield templates for your CVs so that you can start creating those as soon as possible. The system gives you line-by-line -line feedback so that you can spend the time with the career coaches really talking about the finer details of your CV and how to interview well rather than going through and worrying about spelling mistakes and layout and design and things like that. We give students access to VMOC in the summer before they start at Cranfield so that they can get well ahead and well prepared. Now, we offer lots of different research tools that we've paid for so that you don't have to. And the benefit of using these is that you can create very intelligent and um, unusual cover letters and interview questions that will help set you apart from the competition. So all of these companies you see are on offer through our Simplicity CRM. And there are also a number of similar resources available through the library as well. For those of you who prefer to read, we have a large suite of learning packs. This is just a small selection. And these have been developed with the team and with external expertise. These are all available as digital downloads and there are some hard copies in the office for you to take a look at as well. So here are a few feedbacks for you to have a look at. The top one is from a parent of a student who did subsequently start at Cranfield. And the two below are from fairly recent graduates talking about how we have actively helped them to secure their dream role. I would suggest you follow us on social media as soon as possible so that you can get an insight into the types of activities that we run and you can start to get prepared even before you start at Cranfield. If you have any questions on this presentation, please do email us at the email address shown on screen. We'll be happy to help. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's that part. Um, just a few questions, I think, 
we had. Let me just go through this one. I think I've explained AL11, um, the core difference between MSC finance and management and MSC investment management. But just simply to reiterate, uh, apart from your uh, elective choice, which is three out of seven that you choose in a year, it should be specific to each student. The, the key point difference between the two programs is in the two core models in term two. So one focusing more on the, on the on, uh, international corporate finance and management and the other focusing more on investment side, like derivatives and the uh, portfolio management, for example. Uh, the next question was, uh, well, it really depends. So I cannot tell you now exactly. So our current cohort is the one that is now with us and Chris will test testify to this. He's with us as well, 100 students. Um, uh, well, we cannot disclose the, I mean, we, we do not employ the students. So we cannot provide you with statistics on employment rate um, uh, on that part. How many references do I need with my applications? Um, you are talking about applying for the program, right? So what, depending on your circumstances, it's hard for me to say. Uh, I would say that you need your, uh, basically your transcript that you have completed. Your, if it's a B BSc degree, your relevant BSc degree. And you, if, if for your application is required as well, um, for example, post-study uh, experience, then you can provide two references with that. But uh, just to be sh sure, uh, you could drop an email to admissions, just highlighting the point three and asking them uh, for clarity, depending on your specific circumstances, okay? Which we cannot disclose obviously here in, in public meeting. Okay. I think I answered all those four. If there is anything else, let me know. Uh, in terms of alumni, uh, there is a large alumni community. I think uh, I would say that it would be really uh, beneficial for you to get engaged with alumni early, even before you start the course, just talk to our alumni. You don't need to necessarily to do anything else. And then you will see what, what is their opinion and, and what to make out of all of this. And then once you are with us, hopefully you can use the alumni network, uh, wherever you want to go and wherever you want to work in whichever industry, you can work with them uh, to better your career chances for sure. Uh, Vandit, go ahead. Oh, yes, Professor. So I just wanted to, uh, like, since we were talking about uh, the differences between investment management and finance management, mm -hmm. I was just curious about uh, uh, the the careers that, uh, you know, past students have gone into. Like, for instance, from what I understand, finance and management is more about financial planning and analysis and, you know, on, on the corporate management side of it. And uh, investment management is more about, you know, um, equity analysis and going into the the investment part of it. Uh, so I was curious about like, uh, have there been students who have gone into, uh, you know, either or the other side of it as well after doing the course or, yeah. Of course, of course. That's if you just shut off the, uh, um, mute yourself. Sorry. So there is no uh, echo. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, I think I think it's important, maybe, and thank you for uh, you know uh, bringing this to my attention. Uh, it's important for the students, and I think we we try to do this in the term one to explain the students that uh, the, the the career is not just working Goldman Sachs. Finance is much more broader than Goldman Sachs or top four, as many of the students think. So our our students can work from you know uh, from private equity, from corporate side, treasury, from multinational financial institutions to uh, multinational corporations, to all kinds of different areas, traditional bank, investment bank, wealth management bank, advisory company, you know, trading, fintech company, and so on. So uh, you can work in all these kinds of different uh, industries. And I would say, uh, don't think that just because, for example, one of you is going to do private equity elective, you are going to be an expert on private equity, and hence you are going to get, for example, private equity job. That would be too simplistic an approach to think like that, okay? But in short, your answer, yes, you can, you, can, you can work in all of these industries. So I wouldn't think that there will be big advantage, uh, you know, if you do one or the other in that context. One or the other program, to be specific. Sure. sure. Thank you, Professor. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Chris, do you want, so we have with us Chris, who is our current student, who is somebody who has been, you know, uh, following us even before he started to be our student because he has talked to our alumni and then I think he had good feel about this because of that. And I think I wanted Chris to come around and just maybe provide you his, his take on all of this. Chris, are you with us? Yes. Um, Welcome and thank you. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and maybe just 
Yeah, so sure. I'll, I'll, I'll just going to introduce myself first and uh, go ahead with the testimony. Okay. So my name is Christophorus. I'm a MSc investment management student. I have experience uh, three years in business analytics prior to uh, my postgraduate degree. So um, at the moment, um, I I am uh, attending the class with also with the finance management student because in the term one, we are actually sharing classes with uh, finance management. But in the term two, uh, finance and management student and investment management student have uh, some different classes. For example, if you are an uh, investment management student, uh, you will get derivatives and uh, portfolio management. So uh, why Cranfield? So uh, for me, when I was working in Australia uh, last year, I was thinking like to go finance. So finance always in the back of my mind and I'm already planning uh, to actually go to finance, but I want to actually uh, increase my skills uh, before that. So I'm, I'm uh, going to business analytics to increase my uh, quantitative skills in terms of like statistics and uh, an analysis. And um, during that time, I, I met an alumni uh, of Friendfield in Australia and we have lunch and we talk about like, um, what is the career progress? What do you learn actually from Cranfield? And how strong is the alumni connection? After, after the lunch, um, it made me uh, more confident about my education and um, I applied to Cranfield. So uh, I think it, it is actually emphasizing that the uh, alumni connection and uh, also like, you know, the brand itself, Cranfield, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a really good uh, university to actually you know, you can actually talk with alumni. Alumni uh, will answer your question as well. And it's really to connect with them. You can just uh, email, uh, send them a link in message and ask them about their experience at the school and also experience when they work um, after, after completing the program. Um, also, uh, during, during my study now, I joined the Cranfield Finance Society and in which uh, the society I'm um, uh, currently doing uh, a position as a chief portfolio manager. So um, I will share also the link uh, of the society here in, um, in the chat that we actually managing the virtual funds. I, I think I saw one question about, about that. So we involve students as well to actually do a research and what kind of investment that is actually really good for, for the society and also enhance the student skills as well to actually uh, do like fundamental analysis or do uh, any other financial analysis that they learn from the class and apply it uh, you know, uh, discuss together and do analysis in the society. And what career that I want to do in the future? Because uh, for me, I'm, I really, really want to go to buy side. I really want to uh, work in asset management or investment management companies that actually, uh, you know, have an ethos in uh, sustainable investment. So not only like maximizing the returns or like maximizing the shop ratio, I'd say, but also um, having an impact to the society. That's for me. Thank you very much. I also put my link in link as well there if you want to have uh, in touch with me. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, very much. Um, uh, Saloni, we also have uh, with us our second uh, uh, student representative. I mean, I'm going to say our, our, your potential colleague, alumni colleague. Saloni, welcome. Uh, maybe you want to have a few words as well about yourself, about your experience. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Nanya. Um, hi everyone, my name is Saloni Raut. Uh, so I'm the social representative of our class actually. And uh, um, so talking about my experience, uh, we've had an amazing experience um, so far. It's been three months that we're, we're here. And uh, um, so um, about the modules, uh, as Dr. Nimania told you all about the modules, the modules have been really interesting. They've come to an end of our term one, our semester one, and we are going to have our Christmas break, break very soon. And uh, I mean, it, it has just started and uh, we'll, have, we'll have our examinations after the, after the Christmas break. Uh, so we're all preparing for that. And uh, um, about the simulations that Dr. Nimania had mentioned, um, so the simulations are very interesting. He teaches us about uh, the financial modeling and, uh, you know, it will be really helpful for you guys uh, if you attend the simulations. And, you know, like, uh, I'm really sorry about the background noise. I'm outside, actually. So um, really sorry about that. So, um, yeah. 
so about the simulations it can really help you uh, through your dissertation and your electives i think uh, you should all um, go through the go through the module overview before you guys come here uh, so that you are aware of what you have to do throughout the year and you should also uh, you know prepare a cv and uh, get started on your cv as, uh, asap because if you prepare your cv and you come here uh, as soon as you come here we have a lot of careers appointments we have a lot of career sessions that happen uh, so if you guys are if you guys are really worried about the careers that you might have in the future i understand i've been through all of that and um, yeah i mean totally in that situation so um, you just be prepared on your end be prepared uh, about what you have to do and cranfield will take care of the rest so you don't have to worry this is a great university i've come I'm, I'm, i've had a great time here and um, engage in networking as much as you can is something that i would um, you know advise you all because that's what i have done so far so i had like 70 connections on my linkedin and before i came here i connected with a lot of alumni i uh, connected with a lot of uh, seniors um through linkedin and unibody is one platform that you can use um to connect through uh, to connect to our um, you know alumnus so uh, all of our student ambassadors are available for you there um, to whom you can speak to as well so yeah that's all that i have to say all the best you guys thank you saloni very much indeed um uh, okay guys uh, any questions here for 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 the for the students uh, or for me um i think just want to share a, a slide with everybody just one more time at the end if anybody needs to ask any question if you want to see hear some uh, read some experiences from our students about different things about you know how they go about their business i think even chris has written one blog recently or some past blogs about what they are doing you know in the campus on the campus offside of campus uh, uh, in their uh, maybe you know part time job so you can find the blogs online using the blogs cranfield ac uk for finance and management specifically uh, if you have any other questions for us um you can if it's a very specific question to the program uh something that you're curious about you can ask me assuming that it's something that is not sensitive information we can share with you uh, i would be happy to answer it uh, any other alternative questions related to the admission process or some of the questions you had specifically about scholarships yeah, that would be a question you would send to admissions and they would be able to answer it uh in in most of the cases if if not you can then in the worst case refer back to me as well okay any questions that you want to ask us as well here oh uh, professor yeah. i have a, uh, i have a question but i don't want to ho hog too much of the time like if someone else has a question like they can go ahead but if there isn't like i can ask a question go ahead yeah so since uh, you were talking about financial modeling uh, so i wanted to know like you know uh, like is programming involved in it like r or python or something or and if it is like to what extent Uh, yes i mean you are now specifically talking about r so that would be more for for certain coding in in particular i think r would be maybe in term 2 with some other models so the the, the simulation we have done here is more in terms of uh, financial econometrics so uh, more formal models for research and so on uh, but yes it's blended for the for the statistical part of the course that you do and for financial modeling interpreting betas seasonalities for example or investigating uh, more kind of macro policies Uh, on on a kind of uh, 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 let's say um, uh, if you are in government departments and so on uh, when you move to term 2 then you'll have business simulation which is maybe more trading simulation and you know investing into businesses or if it's valuation then it will be more in the context of what you suggested valuing a business and so on so thank you professor and then the one that we had on artificial intelligence it was basically Uh, stata which is coding language for uh, financial econometrics but blended with r so there were codes for r or python as well they are implemented for machine learning so you allow uh, basically machines to collect information using the experience that they can absorb from the internet about you which is more or less what google does and then you can run financial models predicting the fault or something like that uh, what other questions did we had okay no questions uh, anything else for me or for the students if you want
No, okay, so then, uh, uh, well, thank you everybody for joining in first and foremost. We appreciate your interest, if anything. Uh, we hope to see you with us later on. Uh, if not, in either case, if we do or if we don't see you, we wish you all the best in your life. Uh, and, and for those who, who we see here, well, we're looking forward to seeing you as well. Uh, we will also have, um, just to say, I think, a couple of more of these webinars, that depending on, you know, part of the year, et cetera, and, you know, of your registration process. So if there is anything in particular that you want to discuss, maybe, you know, different, uh, you know, developments that are happening, we're happy then, then you join us again later on in the year when we organize uh, uh, these events. So yes, please, please keep an eye on, on communication from admissions and the marketing team about this. Yeah, so you can join in as well again. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe and best of luck in any case.